Hey guys, so you ever wake up one morning, realize you're actually in Silver 5, and so you go ahead and watch a bunch of Yasuo montages, pick up the champion the next day, play a thousand games and realize you're still bronze? Well, don't worry, I have a remedy for you. It's called picking easy champions, and today we're going to go ahead and talk about it. Again, if you've been following me for a very long time, you're going to notice that I do tell players to play easy champions, and champions do become more complex as you go down into the tier list, into diamond, into master tier. But for the beginning of the tier list, and uh, around the ranks of iron, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, you will be seeing champions that don't have as many dashes, don't have a crazy amount of escapes or wave clear, and don't quote unquote essentially cheat lane, which essentially means that you're not giving certain advantages inside of the lane that will negate you from learning the fundamentals just because of your pick. If your champion isn't included inside of the tier list, that means the champion is either too numbers reliant, or the champion is just too far complex, or is just not worth picking up inside of the tier list. Again, this tier list is a permanent tier list, so it does include champion picks that you should be picking from both past patches and future patches, and will only be changed if the champion is reworked from its fundamental kit into a different type of kit. Now, an example of this is actually Pantheon. Pantheon would have been on this list, however, because of the Pantheon changes just recently inside of Season 9, we aren't going to have him inside of this tier list. Coming into Iron, Bronze, and Silver, we're going to start up in top lane with Garen, Malphite, and Annie. Again, very three simplistic champions that do have game-changing abilities. Now, Garen, very simple champion, doesn't actually have many mechanics, and a lot of players at these MMR brackets don't fully understand his lethal damage, and so this champion becomes very powerful inside of brackets in Iron, Bronze, and Silver. Malphite, same thing, very simplistic kit, and does have a very game-changing ultimate that a lot of players don't know how to play against inside of these brackets. Again, Annie, very non-traditional top laner, however, if the fundamentals are mastered even to a slight degree, this champion becomes very powerful and can be viable inside of top lane relative to iron, bronze, and silver. Going back into mid lane, Annie again presents herself, and I don't believe that any other mid laner inside of these tier brackets should be played as they are far too advanced and should be first played to learn mid lane and then eventually branch out to different champions as we go down the list. Going back to AD carry, we're going to have MF and Ash. Again, MF, a champion that dishes out a ton of damage while still being really, really safe and just has a very powerful lane phase along with overall range. Same thing with Ash, very decent range on the champion, self peel, engage, and also very uh, good ability with the hawk shot, allowing you to see enemies as they come by. Again, two champions that allow you to focus on the fundamentals of ADC and will present good results inside of these MMR brackets. Again, going down into support and jungle, well, just don't play these roles. These are high MMR roles, and if you are wanting to climb, and you actually do want to get better playing support is really it's a really poor choice as a lot of players pick it and they don't focus on the fundamentals and so they climb but they're actually very subpar so you can essentially have a platinum support only main who plays at essentially a silver level but because you're not asked to do many things you end up climbing for well relatively no reason you end up climbing for the wrong reasons same thing with jungle in the sense where the Bull is just far too complex and should not be played in brackets in iron, bronze, and silver. Let the other people do it. What you need to do is focus on the basics and learn the game through top lane, mid lane, and ADC. Okay, going into gold and platinum 3. Again, this is up until mid low platinum. We are going to look at top lane. Garen will still be there. Darius, Mordekaiser, and Sion come in. Again, three champions that are slightly more mechanical, however, are good for climbing and should find you success inside of these tier brackets. They're not insanely mechanical, and so they do teach the fundamentals relatively well, and they don't actually have an insane amount of escapes. They don't actually have an insane amount of wave clear that will give you unnecessary advantages in lane. Going down to the jungle pool, for gold towards platinum three now finally we're going to see jungle come into play and if you are inside of these tier brackets please just play tanks and the reason i'm saying play tanks is because even if you're behind on tanks you're still going to have insurance for you and your team and so if you do end up playing stuff like kha'zix stuff like 
middly or elite, these champions, and you do fall behind because of your subpar pathing, you're going to have a lot less success inside of these tier brackets. So please, again, play champions like Ramus, play champions like Zac, Skarner, Zinzal, Volibear, Vi, Amumu. Preferably champions that don't actually have skill shots, so not necessarily Amumu, but Volibear, Zinzal, Skarner, Ramus, and just champions that allow you to essentially one-shot CC opponents are going to be the best inside of these tier brackets. Going back into mid lane, Annie is still there. Orion and Viger both present themselves. They are both champions that really highlight the fundamentals and are just straight very good for climbing elo if you are able to actually pick them up. Going into the AD carry role, MF is still there, Ash is still there, and now finally Varus comes into play. Varus, a champion that is also similar to Ash, has its own engage tool, has its own disengage tool, has a really good amount of range, and Varus does succeed off of better fundamentals. He doesn't actually cheat lane like Ezreal or a champion like Tristana, and it's just a very overall strong champion to pick up inside of the bot lane. Finally, going to support as a gold player into Platinum 3, you're finally going to have supports to pick now, and the best supports are again simplistic champions. And However, these supports do actually are okay, they're, they're actually are okay to have skill shots, and a lot of the reasons are because you can still learn fundamental laning with them. If you are a support in gold to Platinum 3, please go into mid lane or top lane, depending on what pick you take, and learn the basics of laning, because support is a role where you're not asked to do many of the things that are required of laners, and so the players that do end up getting into diamond as supports have a very lower ability to lane than other players and so they end up getting stuck inside of tier brackets like diamond 4 and platinum 1 and really the only difference between a diamond 4 support and a diamond 1 into a master support is their ability to lane if you are going to pick champions like leona please go ahead and play top lane because these champions essentially allow you to understand core fundamental aspects like damage absorption and understanding when to go in etc leona comes into support Karma, Soraka, Janna, Morgana, and Zyra are all very good picks to play inside of gold going into Platinum 3 in the support role. Going into Platinum 2 to Diamond 4, I do personally believe that there is not much of a difference between Diamond 4 and Platinum 4, and it is a lot more like gold and plat than it is like Masters and Grandmaster, and I do believe that um, there is a pretty big substantial difference even now inside of Diamond 4 versus Diamond 1 and Diamond 2. And so the champion picks will still be relatively simplistic. We're going to start off with Garen, Darius, Mordekaiser, and Scion still inside of the top lane. No changes to that. Again, into the jungle, we're going to start having champions that are slightly more mechanical. However, don't have an insane amount of mechanics. And I do believe that, again, if you are a jungler, please play tanks until you are Diamond 1. Understand the jungle, understand routing, understand the basics, the fundamentals, and what actually makes a challenger jungler, and then refine on that until you are at least Diamond 1. And then you can pick up Nidalee, Kha'Zix, and, you know, champions like, uh, uh, slightly more advanced champions. I do believe that inside of this MMR bracket, Ramus is still pretty good, Master Yi, Nunu, Zac, Skarner, Zinzel, Volibear, Vi, Nocturne, Warwick, and Sejuani come into play, and these are champions that will find relatively decent success inside of this uh, MMR bracket. Again, going into mid lane, we now see, again, Orianna is still here, Vigar is also still here, however, Annie is now essentially gone, and it is t uh, the spot is taken by Vladimir, and Lissandra, two champions that are slightly more mechanical. However, I do believe that Platinum 2 to Diamond 4 players are able to control these champions with very much ease and little difficulty. And these champions do, again, highlight the fundamentals and show you what it truly be uh, takes to become a better mid laner. Again, moving into the AD carry role, Ash, MF, and Varus are still the basic three AD carries you want to be picking up however inside of diamond four and platinum two you actually will see lucian come in and lucian is a very strong champion um mainly because it's just the kit he has and well although he doesn't have a kit like mf or varus or ash he is still a very good champion to pick up and master and he does really illustrate the fundamentals needed to climb beyond diamond <clears throat> going back into support Leona is still there. Again, if you are a support player inside of uh, Diamond uh, and Platinum, go play solo lanes, go play mid, go play top lane. If you are picking up champions like Leona, Nautilus, Braum, go play top lane. If you are picking up champions like Soraka, 
Janna, Karma, go play mid lane because these are champions that have similar characteristics to these roles. Now, going back to the list, we have in the support role Leona, Karma, Soraka, Nautilus, Janna, Morgana, Zyra, Blitzcrank comes in, Vigar, again, very strong champion inside of the support role, Alistar, and finally Brand. Finally, Diamond 3 going into Masters, sub 200 LP, up into top lane, Garen, Darius, Mordekaiser, Jax, Renekton, Orn, and Cassiopeia. Renekton, although is a champion that does rely on numbers, I do believe that he can still find success inside of these tier brackets if you are able to play him correctly and you are able to demonstrate the fundamentals to a relatively decent degree. Going down to the jungle pool, we're going to see less tanks, more juggernauts, more champions that do have more skill shot setups, and essentially champions that have more damage. Olaf, Ramis, Nunu, Skarner, J4, Zinzel, Warwick, Hecarim, Nocturne, Zach, Sejuani, Elise Graves, and Rek'Sai. Again, this is an MMR bracket where you want to start to really refine the little things going into Master Tier, in, sorry, into Grandmaster, into Challenger. Moving down into mid lane, Syndra, Orianna, Cassiopeia, Twisted Fate, and maybe Rise if he isn't reworked again. Now, Syndra, Orianna, and Cassiopeia are three champions that are very similar in nature, and they are champions that excel off of players that have better fundamentals, so you should always just be winning lane on these champions. Twisted Fate, although is a little bit different, can still find success inside of Diamond 3 going into Masters, and, you know, again, if Ryze isn't completely changed by, ne by next week, then I think Ryze is still fine and okay to pick and will find success inside of Diamond 3 going into Master tier. Finally, moving down to the ADC role, very simple, same picks, Ash, Lucian, MF, Varus, however, now Kaisa still comes into play. Finally, inside of the ADC role, again, lower MMR ADCs do not want to play AD carries with less range as Kaisa does. However, going into Diamond 3, into Master tier, moving up towards Grandmaster and Challenger, Kaisa can find success inside of these tier brackets. And finally, moving down into the support role, we have Leona, Karma, Soraka, Nautilus, Janna, Morgana, Zyra, Blitzcrank, Vigar, Alistar, and finally Brand. That is it for the tier list. Thank you guys for watching and listening in. I, again, do believe that these champions are not staple. You don't have to pick them to climb. However, if you do want to slow down the game and you do want champions that are more recommended towards your MMR and climbing your elo the best way possible, you should be picking up these champions, learning the game, slowing it down, and then understanding the core concepts you find inside of my videos applying them to your own games and then trying to also replicate what you see in challenger games again thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you for the next video